Welcome to a time set apart, a time to contemplate, a time to reflect, and a time to be. For the past several days, I've been attending Bishop's Convocation via Zoom. Normally, I really look forward to these events as I enjoy sitting in a room with folks I don't get to see very often, spending some time conversing with the people in the hallway, taking a walk, catching up with old friends, just general fellowship with my colleagues from around the Senate. But I have to tell you, there's a pretty big difference between what I just described and then seeing my colleagues in little square boxes all across the screen. I find it much harder to focus on a computer screen for five and a half hours a day, but that's really what life is right now, isn't it? What added to some of the challenges this year was really the topics also. The first day we discussed systemic racism and white supremacy. And the second day we talked about LGBTQ inclusion and acceptance. These are really important topics for the church to discuss, the church to consider and to really take action on. But I have to tell you, they're really hard topics to reflect upon when you are all alone in your office. There's a lot to unpack from my time with these colleagues, and I suspect I'm going to be doing it for some time. I'm not going to start tonight, but what I have found is there are some things that I've been prayerfully pondering as we cover these difficult topics, and I want to share them with you. It may be a little scattered. They may not be as connected as a night as we are often used to in these times. But I'm going to trust that the Spirit's going to work with it. As always, I really thank you for being here. It's good for us to be together. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your Spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Our scripture tonight is going to come from the book of Galatians. Now, Galatians was happening at this critical moment in the early church, as the early church was trying to sort of define its mission and its identity in light of the resurrection of Christ. And Paul speaks in the third chapter in this way. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified, by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many as you were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Then if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. In a writing entitled, Distinguish Your Pain from the Pain of Others, Henry Nouwen invites us to consider the ways in which we walk with one another. There is real pain in your heart, a pain that truly belongs to you. You know now that you cannot avoid, ignore, or repress it. It is this pain that reveals to you how you are called to live in solidarity with the broken human race. You must distinguish carefully, however, between your pain 
and the pains that have attached themselves to it, but are not truly yours. When you feel rejected, when you think of yourself as a failure and as a misfit, you must be careful not to let these feelings and thoughts pierce your heart. You are not a failure. You are not a misfit. Therefore, you have to disown these pains as false because they can paralyze you and prevent you from loving the way that you were called to love. It's a struggle to keep distinguishing the real pain from the false pains. But as you are faithful to that struggle, you will see more and more clearly your unique call to love. And as you see that call, you will be more and more able to claim your real pain as your own unique way of glory. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Let us pray to the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of our faith. When our eyes do not see the gravity of racial injustice, shake us from our slumber and open our eyes, O Lord. When out of fear we are frozen into inaction, give us a spirit of bravery, O Lord. When we try our best but say the wrong things, give us a spirit of humility, O Lord. When the chaos of this dies down, give us a lasting spirit of solidarity, O Lord. When it becomes easier to point fingers outward, help us to examine our own hearts, O Lord. God of truth, in your wisdom, enlighten us. God of love, in your mercy, forgive us. God of hope, in your kindness, heal us. Creator of all people, in your generosity, guide us. Racism breaks your heart. Break our hearts for what breaks yours, O Lord. For you called us to be in relationship with one another and promise to dwell wherever two or three are gathered. In our community, we are many different people. We come from many different places. We have many different cultures. Open our hearts that we may be bold in finding the riches of inclusion and the treasures of diversity among us. We pray in faith as we pray the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Thanks for joining whatever time you've come. This week for Sunday morning worship, we'll be joining the Synod in a, what is called a Color Amazed Preaching Project. I'll have a link up on both uh, congregations' Facebook pages later this week, but it promises to be a wonderfully enriching experience, and so we hope you'll join. Until then, blessings upon whatever part of your day is left. May God's peace be with you.